Um, sweet. So next up, we have Liggs Riggs Meter with Ari. She is the director of the REC program and is responsible for cultivating curriculum, content, and delivery mechanisms for the REC program. She's here to talk about the ever-changing landscape of avalanche and backcountry education and the difference between uh, recreationists and professional education opportunities. Um, most recently, Liz is now a member of uh, NWAC's um, board of directors, and I'd like to welcome her to Sage. Um, as Sherry said, my name is Liz. I am the Recreational Program Director for ARI. Um, and today I got 10 short minutes to answer all your questions about avalanche education right before lunch. Um, so I'm going to give you a lot of um, information. I don't actually have any time for questions. I'm just going to prime you with that. But feel free to find me throughout after lunch or um, when we're having beers today to hit me up with your questions. Um, probably a lot of you because I've been ignoring your emails and phone calls for the last oh. month or so. Um, so yeah, so by now you probably heard of the ProRec split. We've been talking about it for quite a while. Um, it finally happened last year. We launched um, our new educational landscape. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history before that. So prior to 2017, November 2017, this was the paradigm of avalanche education in the U.S. where it was one stream for everyone. And so kind of at this end, we were serving recreational travelers, and at the other end, we're serving pros. And somewhere about here in the middle, we're trying to do two things at once. We're trying to provide more advanced opportunities for recreational travelers, while at the same time prepare professionals for the workplace and a level three course. And as you guys probably know, whenever you try to do a lot of things for everyone, you don't do, end up doing any of it all that well. And that was what was happening with the level two. So A3. Um, which is, I'm losing my notes, um, our industry's professional organization decided to address this with what they called the pro-rec split because we basically took this one stream and split it into two. So I don't love that name because to me a split implies sort of less than and as you can see here we moved from two, three courses to five courses. So it's actually I think a model overall that makes a lot more room for more educational courses. So turning it into another sort of boxes chart. Um, you can see here that if you spread that out and you sort of, um, in, it makes room for, I think in these white spaces, that's before, between, and after the courses that currently exist. I think you see there's a lot of opportunity to create new educational programs. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but you're gonna see, I think a lot more um, schools, organizations, avalanche centers, colleges and whatnot, some of who are gonna be talking later today, um, talking about ways to sort of fill in the space to provide more educational opportunities for everyone. So really I think that maybe instead of the split, we should have called this the pro-rec expansion. Um, oh, going, well, does that work? Nope. Uh, so I think it's time to take a moment real quick to give an explanatory aside about the difference between professionals and recreational travelers. So the big thing is that professionals manage risk for others, and that's either the public, their clients, or as a trip leader, and you can be acting as a professional even if you're not getting paid for it. So if you are managing risk for others, in other words, making decisions for them, you're acting as a professional. And then professionals, again, whether you're getting paid or not, have an obligation to continue to learn about and use industry standard risk management practices. So their educational stream is, includes continued training on how to be a part of a team and using standard language so that more information can be consistently shared um, among the team and across organizations. Recreational travelers, on the other hand, are just responsible for themselves. And they do this oftentimes with the support of information from experts, such as an avalanche center, then they're putting together their own small team to manage risk. And I think that this is arguably more challenging because you're bringing in a lot of factors that as professionals we're accustomed to leaving at home and not bringing into the workplace. So just think about the challenge of trying to go have fun on the weekend with your friends or significant other, but then do something really serious like manage risk. So same goals in the end, you're managing risk, two very different contexts, and I think that that necessitates two very different educational objectives. So I've taken a bunch of time to give you a bunch of background, but you're like, that's nice, I didn't really want any more background, I just really want to know what course should I take this season. So if you are 
new to the backcountry, never been out before, or you've been traveling in the backcountry for a long time and you're like, yeah, I should take a course. Or maybe you took a level one a long time ago, like you had leather boots and maybe your heels came up when you did that. The rec level one is the course for you. So this is um, where you're gonna learn a process that is based on a process that professionals use, and you're gonna work with a group to manage your avalanche risk with information from experts or an avalanche center. Um, now, if you're new to the backcountry or you've been traveling for a long time, um, but you haven't taken a rescue course in the past couple years, or you're an aspiring but not yet current avalanche professional, then the avalanche rescue course is for you. And you're going to, on this course, practice skills that hopefully you're not using very often, if at all. Um, and you'll get up to date on the most current practices and technology. Um, and then you're gonna build habits to practice well. So as Heiko was talking about, how you practice is how you perform. So do you want to practice just so you can, using your beacon or do you wanna practice the whole scene size up all the way through the end and thinking about um, medical stuff after that. As an aside to address the question about if um, resuscitation and evacuation is part of this curriculum, it's not. That's why we, like, that's a whole many days course. So we push you to think about how um, inadequately prepared you might feel after you've pulled someone out of the snow who is no longer, who's pulseless and not breathing. So but that is out of the scope of that course. Um, yeah, so this course is meant to be taken regularly. The curriculum is differentiated for people at multiple levels. So you'll have everyone from brand new folks to highly experienced folks and they're all in this class together. So if you're an experienced backcountry traveler and you've spent at least a year using a repeatable process to manage risk, um, avalanche risk to you and a group, you've taken a level one, and a rescue course recently, or maybe you took a level two prior to 2017, then the rec level two is the course for you. And on this, you're going to revisit, practice, and get coaching on more snow and weather observation skills. You'll learn more about how avalanches form and release. You'll get more coaching on terrain assessment, and you're gonna really practice applying all these things together to facilitate a group managing risk. Um, and you're gonna get more coaching, basically, from an instructor. So if you're thinking, yes, these are the courses for me, where do I sign up? Because that's also confusing at times. <laughs> um, so for a comprehensive list of all the recreational avalanche courses, or actually maybe professional, all the, rev the avalanche courses that are happening in the Northwest, you should go check out the education tab on the NWAC webpage. Um, great resource. If you're specifically looking for a rec one or two that is endorsed by A3, um, which one more explanatory aside, so A3 is our industry's professional organization, similar to the bar or the American Medical Association, brings together a diverse, diverse group of professionals all sort of unified around managing avalanche risk. They set the educational guidelines and so then different organizations, schools and whatnot write curriculum and put on courses that meet those educational guidelines and thus are endorsed by A3. So if you're looking for a, a Rec 1, 2 or Avalanche Rescue course that's endorsed by A3, you should check out avalanche.org. You can find a list of, I believe, courses by state or at least providers by state. And then just to provide another clarification, ARI is a nonprofit organization that writes curriculum that meets A3 guidelines and trains instructors. ARI doesn't, um, directly offer or teach any recreational avalanche courses. We do that through our network um, of over 100 providers. And so you can find those providers at our website, um, avtraining.org. All right, so moving on to aspiring professionals. If you are a newer or aspiring ski patroller, guide, avalanche educator, or forecaster, then the Pro One is the course for you. I just got the one minute, so I'm gonna kinda of run through this. But basically the Pro One is an entry level course for professionals that teaches you how to be an avalanche professional. This is a certification, and so you are assessed on this course. Um, if you are an experienced avalanche professional, then one of these next two courses is for you. Um, the Pro One Bridge is basically a certification exam without the course. So you need to be an a practicing ex um, professional um, with experience conducting avalanche hazard assessment, and basically you need to have had a level two prior to 2017. This is the course that turns your level two into a professional certificate. 
Um, and then for advanced and experienced professionals, um, you have the Pro 2, which is basically a course that is giving you those high level skills you need to be an operational leader. Um, right, so I'm a professional, where do I sign up for these courses? So um, A3, as our industry's professional organization, facilitates bringing together all the diverse stakeholders in our industry to design and oversee professional training as well. And so currently, A3 works with six pro course providers. Maybe it'll go. Um, who are the only, currently, the only pro course providers um, that meet A3, the A3 guidelines in the US. And those are the Alaska Avalanche School, American Avalanche Institute, ARI, Colorado Mountain College, who I believe Roger is gonna be speaking later on, um, the National Avalanche School, and uh, Silverton Avalanche School. And so you can sign up for pro courses directly on each organization's website. Um, and if you lose track of who those are, you can always go to uh, A3's website to find the list of providers there. Okay, so quick summary. I think that um, this is the new landscape of avalanche education. You're gonna start seeing more courses that sort of fit into these white boxes to supplement the courses that we're offering. And so you already see that um, with a lot of the awareness stuff that NWAC is doing, the one day snowmobile and snowshoe workshops, the awareness courses in addition to this new laying track series. And then for experienced um, travelers, you see the going deep workshop, and I think there's a bunch of guide services in the region too that are sort of offering like um, research or mentored practice or um, one, day, one day outings to sort of fill in those spaces. So I think in the future, you're gonna start seeing um, more courses and beyond. So this was a super quick rundown. I hope that this answers a lot of questions that I know people have had about um, educational opportunities and I hope in this that you are able to find something that will get you jump started this year. Thanks.